is joining us now, former Obama Deputy National Security Advisor Ben Rhodes and former Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson, now a partner at Paul Weiss. So, Mr. Secretary, it appears that, you know, the, the, the expiration, we knew it was coming, they knew it was coming. Mm -hmm. Have they done enough? They just sent 1,500, as you know, last week we talked about this active duty unarmed <clears throat> troops, they say. We see heavily armed National Texas National Guards uh, men and I presume women across across the border from where our folks are. Well, first, the comment from the mayor of El Paso, um, what keeps you up at night? What's the end? Reminded me of a conversation I had in 2014 when Ben and I were both in office and I asked uh, a border security expert, is there a point where these countries in Central America, the population is just saturated, you know, that it's emptied out? And the answer that came back was no. Right. They're going to keep it coming. Um, the, the Biden administration is emphasizing the enforcement message that we have our Title Eight authorities. Now that Title 42 is going away, if you come here the wrong way, we will send you back. And that's a message they have to continually send. But so long as the underlying conditions, and Ben knows this, as long as the underlying conditions in Central America, in Nicaragua, Venezuela, Cuba, Haiti, continue to persist, they're going to keep coming because they're making, these families are making the basic decision to flee a burning building. And they're better off, their children are better off here in the United States if for only a couple of years while, while their asylum claim is pending. But Ben, for years I've been hearing administration officials, the previous administration, your administration, and very little was done in the last four years before the Joe Biden came in, to deal with it in those countries, to do more in, you know, all kinds of foreign aid. And that was reduced before President Biden came in. But now we're being told about regional processing centers from the State Department two days ago. It's going to take a long time to stand those up. And people are having trouble with the app that has been deployed. Uh, it reminded me somewhat of deja vu with the uh, Obamacare rollout, that, you know, these technical fixes don't always work as planned, especially not in these conditions. Yeah, I mean, Jay has it exactly right in the sense that you're not going to stop the images that we're seeing. You're not going to stop the thousands and tens of thousands of people coming to the border in the next few months or even the next couple of years uh, just through policies that you pursue in Central and Latin America. That doesn't mean that we don't do that, though. <laughs> like, we should be doing everything we can to address every aspect of the push factors that are driving people to the border. And in some cases, Andrea, our own policies are contributing to that. So you mentioned Cuba and Venezuela. We could be having a, an honest conversation here that the embargo that we have on Cuba and the sanctions that we have on Cuba and Venezuela are contributing significantly to the humanitarian crisis that is also driving people to the border. So there are things that we can do affirmatively to provide assistance to those Central American countries uh, where they're putting in place protections around things like governance and corruption, which is always a challenge. And there are also things that we could be doing probably in revising some of our sanctions policies to get at those push factors. However, in the short and medium term, as Jay says, you need an enforcement message, and you also need communication into those communities in Central America about the difficulties of getting across. Don't assume that if you get to the U.S. border that you're going to get in. Uh, I think a lot of time there's confusion, and traffickers and smugglers take advantage of that by telling people, no, 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 just give us a, a few bucks and we'll get you up to the border and you'll get in, no problem. Part of what the U.S. is doing is, yes, processing centers uh, so that some of this asylum processing takes place further away from the border, but also communication to those people so that they don't think, they aren't misled into thinking that they're going to have an easy time of it if they get to the southern border. Let me just pick up on one thing you said and follow up with you on that, because Regarding Cuba, and I know you know the policy very well, you were part of the normalization under President Obama, and I was down there um, for all of those events. The, the, President Biden had the option of doing something about that, and much to the frustration, and we're not saying that anything has improved, in fact, to the contrary, about the human rights issues down there. But those sanctions could have been addressed, and other aspects of the policy could have been addressed, but because of politics, they have not wanted to touch that. 
Right, Ben? That's exactly right, Andrea. I mean, Jay was a part of this, too. And part of the, the, the plan was essentially that if we were relaxing our sanctions, life is improving for the people of Cuba. Their economic circumstances are improving. They're also empowered by things like the Internet. And we changed our migration policies so that they didn't get automatically paroled in the United States under the presumption that things would be getting better for them in Cuba. When Donald Trump put all those sanctions back in place and tried to roll back everything that we'd done, it created a real acute humanitarian crisis in Cuba where people just can't get the food to survive. And so they're coming to the U.S. border in enormous numbers that we haven't seen in many, many years. And this is an obvious thing that is sitting right in front of the Biden administration to just go back to the kind of openness that we had at the end of the Obama years, make life better for the Cuban people and deal with one of the major push factors that is driving up numbers to the border. And the only thing standing in the way, because a lot of those people were part of the same policies we pursued in the Obama years, you said it, is politics. And right now, the politics that they're going to be facing at the border I would argue, are far worse than having a few angry members of Congress if they revert to the Obama policy on Cuba. And let me also share with you, talking about politics, because it's played on both sides, uh, there was a bus load of 30 people, 30 poor souls just loaded on a bus, we believe somewhere in Texas, arriving in Washington, D.C., outside Vice President Harris's house today and being taken to shelters, and the shelters in D.C., as well as the shelters for migrants in Chicago and New York, are completely overloaded. Yeah. You know. Andrea, there needs to be a nationally coordinated effort for how we resettle migrants here in the interior of the United States. It shouldn't be left to Greg Abbott and Ron DeSantis to decide where migrants go. You end up, therefore, with these political stunts, basically, where you have busloads showing up on Mass Ave or the Port Authority bus terminal here in New York. And so there, there's a smart way to do this. We, Ben knows this, in, you know, seven, eight years ago, we called around the country to various different governors to take their share of refugees that we were resettling here, coming from Iraq and Syria. Obviously, it wasn't th weren't these kinds of numbers. Uh, but, you know, part of seeing this kind of um, uh, resettlement it, it has to involve you know, doing it intelligently, resettling the people across the country intelligently. In an election year, the chances of that are nil, but in any case, there is a House bill going to the floor today, mostly symbolic, uh, with mostly enforcement, nothing else, none of the other social services needed. Ben Rhodes, Jay Johnson, thanks so much to you for your perspectives and your experience. Most importantly, thank you.